I have a feeling this should maybe be inside of here. The Crash H. Well, now I don't see that. Oh, oh boy. Oh, 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 I broke it. Oh, I broke everything. I broke the world. Hey guys, how you all doing? Really? That's just great. You know what? I'm doing pretty great too, until I got this suggestion to try out Hannah Montana Linux. Oh man. Now, I run a show on the Computer Clan called Software Showcase, and if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend it. But before it was a video series, it was just an image gallery on the interwebs, and one of the Linux distros we posted was Hannah Montana Linux, but I have never used it myself. So now is the day where I get to do that. So, I used to install a lot of Linux distros in virtual machines, but that causes a lot of issues, and I don't have a PC to install stuff straight up on, but I have a Mac. Now, I've never installed this Linux distro on a Mac before, but I have installed other Linux distros on Macs before, even PowerPC Macs, so I think this will be doable. Let's try it out. So, I have a simple little setup here with this Asus monitor and this Mac Mini, and the Mac Mini disc is completely sterilized. We can partition it up as much as we want and basically use this as a Linux distro testing computer, a beta testing computer, whatever. It's completely clean. We can do whatever the heck we want with it now, and it won't F up my normal stuff. So, as you can see, we got the blinking question mark of doom. Let's boot this thing into internet recovery mode here quick. So, the only thing missing right now aside from a startup volume, is this vintage OS X Panther mouse pad for our Belkin mouse, beautiful. Let's hop on Deep 13. There we go, internet recovery. I actually had no idea you could go to a Wi-Fi network and that would pop up. I, I knew there was a keyboard shortcut for it, but I had no idea like you could just do it from the little boot picker thing there. The things I learned from you awesome YouTube commenters, like seriously, you guys have taught me so much shish, I can't believe it. So while that's going, let's go download an image of Hannah Montana Linux, <laughs> cause that's a thing, and let's get it burned. Well, here we are, man, the things I let you guys talk me into. What's next, building a Hackintosh and dual booting it with Arch Linux? <laughs> uh, I actually forget I ever said that. So anyway, here we are, hannahmontana.sourceforge.net. We even have kind of a Linux looking like, uh, well, uh, I don't know, maybe a KDE looking panel here, K-Desktop. I think this is a download button. <laughs> Downloads, yeah. Oh, Hannah Montana Linux logo for the back of your PC. <laughs> yes, oh, <laughs> graphic design is my passion. I, I will keep that in mind. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, okay, so we're downloading, and it looks like 725 megabytes, so just barely too big for a CD. Oop, I just dropped my disc. Luckily, I brought DVDs to the party. So that's got about two minutes remaining, and over there on the other system, we got about a minute for internet recovery. So yeah, perfect, perfect timing. All right, so this is ready. Oh, that beautiful old linen, yes. Oh my gosh, Scott Forstall would be so happy. Reinstall, oh, oh shnikes, this is freaking Mountain Lion. Yeah, that would make sense. This Mac Mini is actually very old. <laughs> so it probably defaults to Mountain Lion. Uh, basically, all I need is the disk utility right now, so. Let's see, let's go here. Okay, yep, so there's one partition on here. It looks like it's totally empty, so let's do this. Let's just add a couple. So this I will save, oh, I can't uh, name it. Okay, what, oh, okay, I think I know why. So this will just be, um, I don't know, volume one. The space bar is a little busted on this keyboard, but it's not the butterfly keyboards that Apple is currently facing a class action lawsuit over. No, it is, uh, one of the older ones, but it is probably very dirty under the keys, so yeah. Anyway, um, I'm just gonna call it uh, Hannah Montana Linux, HML. The ISO is labeled basic edition. Oh gosh, wh what more is there? <laughs> is there like a an advanced version, like a home and student version? I don't know. So we'll keep that like that. Um, these, yeah, volume one for whatever, volume two for whatever, volume three here will be HML, Hannah Montana Linux. 
I just realized, I was like, that initialism sounds familiar. It's hate my life. So uh, we're just gonna call it <laughs> HM-Linux, so it's a little nicer. And uh, we'll keep everything OS extended journaled because we're gonna have to reformat stuff anyway. So let's do a, an apply. These partitions will be added, volume one, volume two, HM Linux. This partition will be resized, untitled, partition. Pulling the audience here. I'm kind of okay with the new disk utility, which is not this by the way, but as you see, I do struggle with it in other episodes. But that pie chart, I don't know. I find this way less confusing than that freaking pie chart. I've never made a partitioning mistake with this interface, but with that pie chart, I have made countless mistakes. Here is the ISO, Hannah Montana Linux, x86 basic edition. Ooh, basic edition, fun. Okay, we have a DVD. Put it inside the super drive. I just, you know, I could image stuff to flash drives. I just seem to have much better luck when using optical media. I don't know why, I just do. <laughs> so we're gonna be doing that. You've inserted a blank DVD, choose an action. How about mind your own business? So I'm gonna right click, burn. Let's see here, ready to burn. Well, everything's grayed out. There we go. Well, that's weird. I have a feeling that when you click this arrow, the window should like collapse, but it just kind of does that. I think that's a bug. You might want to run that by your QA department, Apple. Yeah. <laughs> We'll do maximum possible, verify, and eject. Burn, baby, burn. Opening session. Okay, now we just um, sit here for a while. And we are victorious. A successfully burned DVD. I shall label it accordingly. HM-Linux. So, I will now move this over to the Mac Mini, and you are going to watch the intense excitement. I've never done this before, actually. It could totally fail. Just gotta hook up. Our super drive friend. All right. Never get the USB turned around the right way, you know? It's always the wrong way at first. But with USB-C, that is not really a problem anymore. But there is a much bigger problem, the fact that I can't plug any of my shit into it. But that's a conundrum for another day. Let's boot her up. All right, so I'm gonna pray that I'm gonna insert this disc and something shows up on the screen. <laughs> Ooh, it has been a long time since I've touched Linux on a Mac, or on any computer for that matter, aside from a virtual machine. So uh, just uh, hoping it works. Okay, so it shows up as Windows because the default boot picker here doesn't know how to interpret this as anything else, so that's, that's kind of a good start. Oh, this is just beautiful. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, I don't even know what most of these languages are. Wolof, what? There's probably people like, man, you don't know how to pronounce anything. Okay, I'll be honest, and I'm gonna tie this into something. Before I continue, please don't give me crap if I pronounce something wrong. Linux people seem to just pride themselves on correcting people's pronunciations of things, because in other videos I've done, you know, I try saying the names of these rather quirky Linux things. Like, a lot of Linux software and things use weird names, and no one can seem to agree on how they're pronounced. So I choose one of the ways, and people are like, no, that's not how you do it. It's Liviosa, not Liviosa. So just cool it. Just be nice to me. I'm just a human, I think. Oh, dude. Oh, gosh, that pink and green and the Hannah Montana logo. Oh, oh, this is beautiful. So, um, check disk for defects, test memory, boot from first hard disk. Well, let's just install it. I mean, it does have a live CD mode, it looks like, but let's just go all out and install it here. I think there's a little bit of an alignment issue here, yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling this should maybe be inside of here. Maybe this should be centered while we're at it. Maybe this shouldn't be neon green. <laughs> I honestly don't know what I expected. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Graphic design is my passion. Okay, this is a little strange. So the thing is just bouncing back and forth and the hard drive sounds like it's chugging. Like it'll go for a bit like, and then it'll, oh. Uh. Oh, is, uh? 
Okay, well, it's not letting me type, so is it loading something? Okay, my keyboard doesn't even, the caps lock light doesn't even turn on. But yeah, it sounds like the CD isn't, or the DVD isn't spinning anymore. Enter help for a list of, well, I can't, I can't type anything though. That's weird. All right. Oops. I, oh shit. I just unplugged the CD drive. I meant to unplug the keyboard. That probably f***ed everything up. <laughs> I'm just going to shut this down. Well, that was a mistake. All right, we're going to do take two on this and see what's up. All right, again, there's the Windows disk. Windows. <laughs> it's really Hannah Montana Linux. You know, if I can't get this working, I should probably find just some old PC just to put Linux distros on. Couldn't hurt, right? Just get like an old Dell Optiplex, like the ones you see at schools. <laughs> All right, English. So the keyboard is working here. So I don't know why it wasn't working like earlier. Um, let's try the live CD boot. Just see what's up and then see if we can run the installer from there. Because it looked like it was hung like a whore. Just kidding, no. It looked like it wasn't responding. Yeah, this is where it got to. And then it went to like a command line. So let's just enjoy this hypnotic, beautiful <laughs> graphic design. <laughs> oh, gosh. I don't know. Maybe it's art. Okay, so it says no controller found like last time. I'm not sure what it means by that. Does it mean like a keyboard or something? I'm a total Linux noob. Okay, uh, let's try a few things. Just going to unplug and replug the keyboard. Didn't do jack. Yeah, I'm at a bit of a loss. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to hit up the Google machine. Okay, so I'm trying some of the other function key shortcuts on the main menu. And, oh, no, it's bringing me to the same thing. Yeah, I have a feeling we're gonna get stuck here. Yeah, um, if worse comes to worse, uh, I'll just throw this into a virtual machine, maybe? Just because I wanted to mess around with this uh, distro. The main goal wasn't to install it natively. I mean, I would like to, like I would with other Linux distros. But I just want to mess around with it because, in a way, I was dared to do it. So the goal isn't to install it natively. The goal is to just use it. So if, you know, in a pinch we can't figure this out, I will switch to plan B, which is throw it into a virtual machine, probably just VirtualBox because, you know, I used to use VMware Fusion and Parallels, but they charge up the butt just to keep the software working, which I think is total bullshit. <laughs> uh, but if any of you have any ideas as to why it's freezing up, to, oh, oh, okay. Well, if any of you guys have ideas as to, <laughs> fuck, I almost knocked my other camera off the desk. I am spazzing out. <laughs> oh, all right. For the third time, I'm going to try saying this sentence. If any of you guys have ideas as to why the keyboard works here, but it stops responding after I go to the next screen, feel free to let me know because I may do a follow-up Crazy Ken episode where I try to install this natively, but I need to get past this keyboard issue. So if you have ideas, please tell me, please. Oh, wait, no, this is a, a help-like index. Okay, well, let's see what this is. So, on a few systems, you may need to specify a parameter by pressing F6 in order to boot the system. Uh, F6? Let's see. Oh, my gosh. What the hell does any of this mean? Uh, I don't see anything about... Oh, let's see. Disable USB is no USB. Well, we need USB on, not off. F4. Normal use driver update disk. Do I have a driver update disk? I have no idea. This can't be that difficult, right? Do I need like another computer keyboard? Like a, oh, now we got two. Oh, insert a driver CD and press enter. Great, no, it's not what we need. And my keyboard is not responding anyway. Maybe I need a different keyboard. Maybe it just doesn't like this keyboard. Well, all the keyboards I would have are USB or Bluetooth. So if, you know, USB doesn't work. None of this is going to work. I think we're in a little bit of trouble uh, with the straight-up installation. So we may have to virtualize this just to accomplish the goal of using it. Well, I feel somewhat stupid, but at the same time, I don't. The boot options are down here. I was, like, looking at the index, like, oh, there's all these boot things, but where the frick do I type them in? Yeah, down here. It wasn't really pronounced that you can type in down here, but I guess I should have used my eyeballs to find out that... You can put shit down here. See, the keyboard works fine here. I don't know, ACPI off? 
that's different. I turned that. We'll see, like, if I do... It, it was normally like that. I'm going to do that now. I have no idea if that's going to do jack shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm really not good at this stuff. Well. All right, so I think it's time to let go of whatever the heck this is, but feel free to, you know, help me out here. So... I'm open to suggestions, but I'm going to try something different before I go the virtualization route. I'm going to try loading up the live mode on a computer with a built-in keyboard. I have no idea if that will do anything different, but we're going to try. Uh, hmm. I just realized I don't have a long enough HDMI cable to reach the laptop. I'm going to have to move it all around because the cable I have plugged in is actually uh, really short. It's, uh, it's a tiny little guy. Yeah, I'll have to get a bigger one. Don't make that dirty. It was talking about a cable, people. Jeez. Get your minds out of the gutters. Oh, I stole the HDMI cable from the Apple TV. Now nobody can watch Netflix. <laughs> it's my account anyway, so whatever. So we're just going to use this. Plug the HDMI into my MacBook Pro because I still can. Let's see your 2017 computer do that. Suckers. All right, let's boot it up. I guess the output won't work. Um, do I have to clamshell it? Okay, I'm willing to, you know, bet that this is not gonna work whatsoever, but we're gonna try. Bong, yeah. Startup sound. Because this computer still has one, unlike the newer MacBook Pros. Come on, baby. Yeah, Windows. Okay, let's not get too excited yet. We're, we're not out of the woods yet. Oh man, something feels awfully wrong about this design. <laughs> like on the screen of such a beautiful, sleek, modern machine. Oh, it gives me shivers, but I like it. Well, we'll, we'll just do live because I don't have a partition to throw this on right now. So let's just do the live CD mode. And let's see if it reads the keyboard. You know, I wonder, you know, there's rumor that Apple is going to go to their own silicon for their MacBook Pros, kind of like what they do with their, you know, iPads and phones and all that stuff. So I wonder if that happens, will this type of stuff be possible anymore? Like, will non-Mac operating systems be able to run on the architecture? What happens with Windows? Will that still be compatible? All of these questions I have no answers to. Okay, right now, this didn't happen on the Mac Mini. On the Mac Mini, we got like a progress bar going back and forth. Now we're just kind of at a blinking cursor screen. So now we're gonna move to plan C, as in Charlie. Virtualization. So much fun is about to be had. All right, let's have some fun with virtualization. <laughs> Let me guess, virtual box. Let's put the image in here. Hannah Montana Linux, type Linux, yes. It is based off of Ubuntu 32-bit, I would imagine, right? Maybe, possibly. Switch, close, zoom in. There we go, that's pretty. English, let's do install. Okay, now we have a black screen. What? Oh, oh shit, son. We actually have something. All right, all right, all right. This is officially the furthest we've ever got with this beautiful purple and black interface with green and yellow accent colors. Ready to install. Yes, this is a USA Macintosh keyboard. Let's see, VirtualBox was able to find it. Oh my gosh, I cannot look at this purple. It is so ugly. Use the entire disk. Yes, it's virtualized. Boom. What is your name? I got a Drew P. Wiener here. Anybody expecting a Drew P. Wiener? I hold in my hand a Drew P. Wiener. Ready to install. Yes. Oh, so is this what the, are these the windows decoration, or the window decorations? Um, oh, I am excited. If this is the window decoration, 
uh, I am ready. My body is ready. Now, notice earlier I said Windows decorations by accident. I, I do something similar when I'm trying to type the common noun window. I will capitalize the W. Just because I write the proper noun Windows, as in Microsoft Windows, so much more frequently. It's just muscle memory. Does anyone else do that? <laughs> uh, I know I sure do. So let's just experiment with this. That looks like help. Is this like a window shade? Oh, fr frick on a stick. Okay, that's obviously not a window shade. That's like a maximize. Now we know that. And it is installing, even though it's virtualized, it's still on a PCI Express, you know, M2 form factor SSD. So it's, it's small and fast. <laughs> So is this a minimize? That must be a minimize. Well, then what's this? Is this? Oh. Oh, this is like a menu. Okay. Sweet. And this probably does something. All right. Well, restart now. Ooh, I saw the X logo. But that doesn't surprise me. A lot of this stuff is driven by X. Especially if this is Ubuntu based. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> All right. So Tux is wearing like a little Hannah Montana tattoo. When did you get that tattoo, Tux? We got, like, loading things there. It only showed one icon, and then it was gone, and, you know, Miley Cyrus singing, having a good time. Isn't her real name, like, Destiny Hope or something like that? Destiny Hope, a.k.a. Miley Cyrus, a.k.a. Hannah Montana. Yeah, I gotta get the scaling thing worked out. Uh, I'm sure I can scale it even without the uh, guest additions, but the guest additions would probably make the scaling work better. Okay, so... Yeah, this, this definitely looks like it's uh, K-based. I think this is a K desktop environment or something similar. Um, but this looks like Plasma. Isn't that the Plasma dashboard or something? I apologize in advance for my newbiness. Okay, so I tried changing a setting to like make this thing scale better, but oops, nope, it's now like microscopic. Okay, so before we experiment and have a little fun, let's get the guest editions installed so we can use this thing at a resolution that's more than 800 by 600. Okay, haven't done this in a while either. All right, piece of cake. We can do this. Oh my gosh, this interface. Just the skin. Oh, all the folders have the Anna Montana logo on them. Oh, oh dear. Uh, okay, I got this. Um... Pseudo password. So, yeah, sorry, I have to keep zooming in and zooming out just to see what's going on because uh, I can't run this at a good resolution right now because uh, I guess I need drivers? Right now it only lets me go to 800 by 600. That felt, like, underwhelmingly fast. I mean, it is on an SSD. Uh, so I'm guessing we'll reboot now, right? Yep, it looks like, yes, I think it worked. Plasma Workspace, the KDE Crash H. The Crash H. Well, that confirms my other things. I was like, this is KDE and this is Plasma. Well, okay, that's confirmed now. That's awesome. But Crash H. <laughs> this reminds me of that time uh, Ada Blasi was setting up, uh, <laughs> I think it was a Dell server with his buddy. Um, and he got a Windows blue screen, and the, it was like overscanned or something like that, so it got cropped. So it just said, L, your hardware vendor for support. Oh, L, L, your hardware vendor for support. Your sister is halted. Dell, we need you. Hey, Mike, this is Steve Jobs. You, your machines suck. <laughs> <laughs> so, Crash H, yeah, that's, that's, that's fun. Um, but yeah, the resolution is good. Nice, so the guest editions worked. Things uh, move around. Uh, this is pretty smooth, actually. I'm surprised how well this is actually working. Uh, yeah, appearance settings, why not? Okay, well, now this is at a more usable resolution. Let's enjoy Hannah Montana Linux. Hannah Montana 4. This is the wallpaper. Let's just go through these wallpapers. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's great. Um, Hannah Montana 5. I want, like, a wrecking ball graphic to, like, swing in and just, like, shatter the whole display. That would be absolutely astonishing. Yeah, let's do... Yeah, we'll use the default one. <laughs> Theme, Hannah Montana or Oxygen. So it looks like we have our home folder down here. Oh, that is a... That's one of the old Apple Mac OS X wallpapers with the Hannah Montana logo on it. Didn't think I'd catch that, would you? What do you think Steve Jobs would say? 
All right, so we got a kind of an idea of how this interface is and the panel down here and all that good stuff. Let's see what kind of programs are on here. So we have Dolphin for the file manager. We have um, Amarok, Amarok, something for the audio player. Good. This is now time for you guys to correct my pronunciation on everything. So go crazy. Are you ready to Amarok? Yeah, I think it was Amarok then. Good. Conqueror is a web browser. Yes, I'm aware of that. So Google, I am feeling lucky. So it's just going to default to something? Okay. Uh, well, Computer Clan. Shameless plug. Where will it bring us today? Whoa, okay. That's a little scaled improperly. Um, but yeah, it brought us to the YouTube channel. That's pretty good. It... Um, if I understand correctly, this uh, Linux distro has not been updated in like five years at the time of this tech video log, so there's probably some things that don't work right, and I bet there's also some like scaling issues with uh, different types of displays. So yeah, it is definitely cropping, and it looks like crap, <laughs> uh, but it kind of works. Oh, okay, it's gonna uh, find details. Oh gosh, I cannot, I cannot read tiny black text on a purple background just go away dude piss off oh my gosh uh yeah well let's uh i'm gonna try to throw some files in here see what's up use some of the software yeah well i'm having some troubles getting the shared folders to be accessed through the guest system into the host system and you know i got stuff on dropbox i can maybe access but yeah the web browser uh uh it's a little out of date. Now, I could uh, probably install a more modern web browser on here if it's compatible even with this probably five or six-year-old operating system. Actually, I don't know how old it is, but it's probably at, this update is probably at least five years old. I don't think it has been updated since, but um, I could be wrong. Let's uh, maybe find some about information somewhere. Well, we'll do that later. We have widgets to play with. Let's see. System monitor, battery indicator. Ooh, XIs, yes. Well, this is an XIs clone. They look a little more shiny. Oh, that's just the icon. Yeah, this is, does look a lot like XIs. Nice. Oh man, there's actually a lot of widgets in here. Um, Earlier I saw hide and show dashboard. Well, now I don't see that. Oh, oh boy. Oh, 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 I broke it. Oh, I broke everything. I broke the world. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, I did not want to do that. I, the plasma icon. What did I do? Oh my gosh, I killed it. I killed it. I'm just going to restart because I have no idea what to do. <laughs> plasma workspace. We have another fatal error. The KDE crash H. So I'm just going out on a whim here trying to maybe install Firefox through apt-get. Uh, a command I don't use very often, so I'm just kind of guessing here. Unable to fetch some something or other. Okay, well, I have no idea if that did anything useful. So I went to the Firefox website to try to get a version that will run on a 32-bit Linux system. At least I'm guessing this is still 32-bit version, 32 -bit version of Linux. I'm, I'm really just guessing at a lot of stuff right now. So I downloaded that. Okay, well, I tried something different. Instead of downloading it and then trying to open it, I just let it open inside of Arc. And... It looks like it's interpreting some things, maybe? Extract. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so screw that. I apparently have no idea what I am doing. But I did do something that I think will totally make up for it. Okay, so this is probably the most genius use for excise I have ever done. <laughs> I put him over Tux. Oh my gosh, he looks he looks insane, but he also looks like stoned or something because his corneas are like bright pink and he's just following my mouse cursor. <laughs> Dude, he looks ridiculous. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I had a little too much fun with that part. Yeah, if I could sum this Linux distro up in one word, it would be purple. So I'm calling this a stalemate because I couldn't get it to install straight up on the Mac Mini, but I still got it virtualized and we were able to play around with it and mess with Tux, uh, Tux's face right there. So again, I'm open to suggestions if you guys have any ideas as to how I can get the keyboard input to work where we were having issues earlier. And let me know if you've ever tried this 
beautiful work of art of a Linux distro. And I'm open to other recommendations of obscure and very weird ones like this. So <laughs> feel free to leave me a comment down below. But thanks for tagging along with me. To be continued, possibly? We'll see. Catch the crazy and pass it on.